Today's video sponsor is GGG Mall, where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, it's Shitgate Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So as for today's video, we're gonna have the first video on my Ryzen 7 7700X. Now, with the, with the tests, yes, the tests of stock versus Curve Optimizer versus the manual overclock, so all cores overclocked for the same frequency with a static voltage. Manual overclocking has been the top tier overclocking for years, but as soon as the CPUs actually managed to have a really, really good boost frequency uh, algorithm like PBO 2.0 or the new algorithm that you see on Intel CPUs, well, manual overclocking stopped being a thing. For example, on Ryzen 3000 and 5000 series, manual overclocking was almost useless. Yes, useless. So you were way better using PBO, Curve Optimizer on the Ryzen 5000 series, and on the Ryzen 3000 series, well, you were just completely fine leaving it at stock. No need to mess around at all. But with the Ryzen 7000 series, well, it seems that manual overclocking is back. And Curve Optimizer is not the only option that you have to improve your performance. While manual overclocking can bring many other things like lower temperatures, and, of course, better multi-threading performance. Now, is it worth it for the Ryzen 7000 series or not, like on the Ryzen 5000 series and 3000 series? Let's find out. Today's first game is Far Cry 6 using the X12 and high settings. Although this game isn't much CPU intensive, it is definitely CPU dependent, meaning that you need a good CPU if you want to go over 100 FPS most of times. At 1080p we have strange results with the Curve Optimizer actually being below the stock and OC results, but once again it may be due to some issues with boost frequencies. In terms of overall results, the OC combo wins by a small margin, delivering not only higher averages, but also higher 1% lows. Not to even mention the lower power draw and temperatures that could be seen in the side-by-side -side comparison. Overall, a win-win situation here. Now with Horizon Zero Dawn also using high settings. This is a game that's both CPU intensive and CPU dependent. And once again the all cores overclock setup got the best results, with around the same averages but with 6 FPS more in the 1% lows at 1080p and slightly higher ones at 1440p as well. This while decreasing the temperature by 10 degrees and the power draw by up to 20 watts, leading to exceptional gains in this particular title. Now with the recently beloved Cyberpunk 2077, thank you Edge Runners, using the X12 and high settings. 
In this game, unless you have a very bad CPU, you'll most likely get GPU bottlenecked before your CPU starts showing its suffering. And this is something that you can actually see here, with the 1440p and 4K results being completely GPU bottlenecked, and with even the 1080p being only slightly higher for the manual OC configuration, which, once again, shows its good points over the other two. In this case, manual OC delivers almost the same temperatures at stock, but reduces the power draw by 10 watts, which is always nice to see. Hitman 3 is a new addition to our test and has one of the heaviest CPU benchmarks nowadays in terms of physics. And of course there are heavier scenarios, obviously, but this benchmark will leave most CPUs on their knees begging to be turned off. And in this scenario, using high settings, the manual OC is once again the overall winner, delivering better overall results at 1080p, with 9 average FPS and 5 FPS in the 1% lows over stock, together with an outstanding temperature decrease of 13 degrees, and of course, 20 watts less compared to Curve Optimizer. At higher resolutions, results are all within the margin of error, with the 1% lows bouncing a bit at 1440p, but nothing game-changing. The mythical CSGO couldn't be missing, otherwise people wouldn't know at how many FPS they could die to a 12 years old. Yeah, your $2000 PC won't stop you from dying to a kid playing in a toaster. As for results, this is actually the first game where Curve Optimizer delivers higher FPS numbers, possibly due to higher boosts in certain cores, delivering then higher FPS in games that focus on single core performance, like CSGO. Although the manual OC configuration still delivers higher results than the stock ones, and it comes with the well-known lower temp slash power drawback, which is always a nice thing to have. Rainbow Six Extraction is another new addition to our tests using Vulcan and High Settings preset. This game is quite heavier than Rainbow Six Siege, with even the RX 6800 delivering around 300 average FPS instead of the usual 500 or more in the previous title. As for the results, we have once again a strange issue where the Curve Optimizer results are lower than stock, which makes absolutely no sense. The same happened to Far Cry 6 at 1080p, but now it happens in all resolutions, which makes me think that maybe the Curve Optimizer isn't boosting the correct cores in this game, leading to a performance loss compared to stock and OC results. In terms of temperatures and power draw, of course, the differences are quite smaller now, but the manual OC configuration continues to take the lead as expected. Is under attack. And well, new CPUs, new tests and new games, I guess. This time we have the Rift Breaker with its CPU benchmark. At 1080p we can see a mild advantage for both CO and OC over stock but nothing relevant, while at 1440p and 4K we actually have the opposite of what we had before. Now we have the Curve Optimizer delivering better results than both the other configurations, and it's even stranger to see higher 1% lows in a GPU bottleneck scenario such as 4K, but doing the benchmarks once again showed exactly the same results, leading me to a odd but very interesting scenario. Oh! 
Moving now to Marvel Spider-Man with a small run around the city using all settings to high. Remember this is a gameplay and although I tried to replicate it the best I could, things will always be different. The results seem to overall be all within the margin of error at all resolutions here. But it is strange to see lower results at 1080p with Curve Optimizer while I know I did almost the same movements in every single test. But well, also, if you're asking yourselves why we have the same results at 1080p and 1440p, it is because we have a CPU bottleneck here. Or maybe AMD just needs better drivers for Spider-Man, I guess. Who knows? Civilization 6 is another CPU-heavy title that relies on cores and cache, and that's why I thought I would see the manual overclocking delivering the best results. But I couldn't be more wrong. It seems that the core frequency boosts are working properly in this title, delivering a boost of around 10 average FPS over the other two configurations when using Curve Optimizer, reflecting into a more or less 3% boost. Even at 1440p and 4K, the Curve Optimizer results keep being better, showing us how well the boosts work with this game. Or, how well the game works with the boosts. Overall, great results. Our final game tested for this video is Need for Speed Heat using high settings. Now, let me tell you that this is one of the most terribly optimized games I've ever seen. And that's why I always test it. At 1080p and 1440p we have the same results because even a 7700X fails to push more FPS in a garbage game such as this one. But with Need for Speed and Bound around the corner, the next three tests won't be with heat. Overall, nothing new to show here, I believe things will be different as soon as I test different RAM configurations, because that's what makes the most difference in this game. The final benchmark is Cinnabon Chart 23. Just before anything let me tell you that this chart is completely out of scale because I mixed up three charts in order to show you scores, temperatures and power draw in the same page. So ignore the scales and focus on the numbers. The grey bars showing single core results while the colored ones show the multi-core ones. These results just come to solidify what I've been showing so far, with manual overclocking delivering higher multi-threading performance with 12 degrees less in multi-core and 21 degrees less in single core, which is just insane. The difference keeps showing itself on the power draw as well, consuming around 20 watts less in multi-core and 16 watts less in single core, which is outstanding. It is also interesting to note that although Curve Optimizer usually has higher temperatures than stock in games, it also delivers lower power draw and temps versus stock when going into single core workloads. The same thing obviously doesn't happen with multi-core, but in terms of single core, it is better than stock. Still, if you care about temperatures, power draw and multi-core performance, manual OC is the way to go. So guys, as you saw in the benchmarks, well, manual overclocking is overall the best way to go. It's the best way to go once again on the Ryzen 7000 series, so we have the Ryzen 1000 and 2000 series where manual overclocking was the shit, then we have the Ryzen 3000 series where manual overclocking wasn't useful at all unless you wanted a bit better temperatures and maybe a bit better multi-threading ability. On the Ryzen 5000 series, well, manual overclocking was once again useless and Curve Optimizer would bring you way better results, like you see in this video. And it seems that on the Ryzen 7000 series, manual overclocking is back and it is definitely the best way to go in an overall scenario. You can leave the CPU at stock and it will perform wonderfully well, but in between the Curve Optimizer and manual overclocking, at least in these CPUs because they are really, really optimized in terms of frequency and that's why we can actually get 5.4 GHz across all cores instead of having 5.5 GHz in some of them, 
In most scenarios, you would have to lose like 200 or 300 megahertz if you wanted higher performance in all cores. So higher frequencies in all cores. But Ryzen 7000 series are so well optimized in terms of frequency that you can get just 100 or at max 200 megahertz slower in all cores with less voltage than you were using at stock. So that's a pretty nice thing and that's why manual overclocking is back and really worth it. So less way less temperatures than curve optimizer way lower temperatures than curve optimizer way less power draw than curve optimizer and more performance or equal to curve optimizer while performing way better than stock it's once again a win-win situation so if you ask me manual overclocking is the way to go on the ryzen 7000 series and well guys that's all for today's video thanks a lot for watching don't forget to hit like subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot and well See you in the next one, I guess. Yeah, see you in the next one. <laughs>